Well, we now are ready for the very last example we'll work through together on graphing functions. So let's take it slowly and let's really rejoice in this because this is the last time together we are going to graph a function. So the one that I selected, I thought you would enjoy this vintage function, x over x squared minus 1. That's a minus 1. Some vintage, huh? In fact, since this is our last one, I want to do this really right because, you know, if this is going to be vintage, I want this to be really pretty. Look at that. Minus 1. And I want to shoot the works on this. Let's do it all. Let's do it all. In fact, I'm going to use blue for this just to really celebrate. Okay, so where do we start? First up, I see it has a denominator, so there may be asymptotes. Let's investigate that first. So the first thing I always look at are the vertical asymptotes. So for the vertical asymptotes, what do I do? Well, step one is to see if I can factor the top and the bottom. The top can't be factored, though the bottom can be. Notice that's the difference of two perfect squares. So I could write f of x as x divided by x plus 1 times x minus 1. And I can't cancel, though, anywhere. And so all I have to do now is take a look at when the bottom equals 0. So if I set the bottom equal to 0, I see that either x equals minus 1 or x equals plus 1. So I see x equals minus 1, x equals plus 1. That's where the denominator is equal to 0. And therefore, those are my vertical asymptotes. So that was pretty easy. I found vertical asymptotes right away. I factored the top, factored the bottom, did any cancellation I possibly could. And then after that, set the bottom equal to 0, found my vertical asymptotes. Horizontal asymptotes. Well, for the horizontal asymptotes, different issue. Remember, there I'm asking what happens as you go off to the horizon. So what I want to do is make x get really, really, really big and see if I'm honing in on any particular y value. So there I'm interested in the growth rate. Well, the top is growing like x. The bottom is growing like x squared. So this whole thing is growing like x over x squared, which is 1 over x. And what happens as x gets bigger and bigger and bigger to 1 over x? Well, that's getting smaller and smaller and smaller, and it's heading toward 0. So in fact, since this power, the bottom power, is higher than the top power, I know automatically there will be a horizontal asymptote, and it'll be located at y equals 0, or the x-axis. So that was really fast. We were able to immediately knock off the asymptotes. We see there are going to be a whole bunch. Notice there are two vertical asymptotes, by the way. We've got to be careful of that, two vertical asymptotes. All right, well, now it's time to shoot the works and try the hodgepodge of, of, of increasing, decreasing, so forth. OK, well, we need to take the derivative of this, which uh, will require us to use the quotient rule. So let's use the quotient rule here. So that's the bottom x squared minus 1, multiplied by the derivative of the top, which is pretty easy. That's just 1, minus the top, which is x, multiplied by the derivative of the bottom, which is just 2x. And we divide all that by the bottom squared. And we can simplify that just a little teeny bit. And what do we see? Well, here I see an x squared, and then I have a minus 2x squared. So x squared minus 2x squared is minus x squared, and then I have that minus 1, and that's all I have on the top, divided by x squared minus 1 all squared. Let me caution you to something. You might say right now, hey, I can cancel these two things. They look the same. They are not the same. This is minus x squared minus 1. This is x squared minus 1. There's no negative sign there. You can't cancel. In fact, if you really want to make this clear in your mind, you might want to factor out that negative sign, and then you can really see the difference between the top and the bottom. You cannot cancel there. OK, well now let's find out the critical points for this function. So I take the derivative and set it equal to 0. When I set the derivative equal to 0, the only way that can happen is if the top were 0. Is the top ever 0? Well, no, because if that were to equal 0, that would mean that x squared equals negative 1. And x squared is always non-negative. So in fact, this is never 0. But well, what are the other places to look for critical points? We have to look where the denominator is 0. Well, the denominator is 0 when x equals 1 or minus 1. Are those critical points? Well, no, because the function's not defined there. In fact, we've already seen that those points represent a vertical, vertical asymptotes. So in fact, again, no critical points. So no critical points. 
So that's sort of interesting. There'll be no max and there'll be no min here. What about increasing or decreasing? Well, let's make a little sign chart. So here's f prime of x. Do we have no points to write down? That's false. We do have points to write down. You should mark down all your vertical asymptotes. So we have one at negative one. We have one at one. OK, now let's run the sign chart business on the derivative. Why the derivative? Well, because I'm interested in if the function is rising or falling. So how the function is moving is given by the derivative, given by the slopes of the tangents. So I go to the derivative function, which is right here, and I'll plug in some points. Let's plug in negative 2, which is to the left of minus 1. If I put a negative 2 in here, what do we see? Well, here we see a 4 plus 1 is 5, and there's a minus sign in front. So the top is negative, negative 5. On the bottom, well, I see something squared. So no matter what this is, it turns out this is going to be 4 minus 1, which is 3. 3 squared, it's positive. I have a negative over a positive. That's a net gain of negative. What do I have when I plug in 0? If I plug in 0, I see just negative 1 over, well, minus 1 squared is 1. So negative 1 over 1 is negative. So I see negative here. Here, I have a vertical asymptote. I mark that with a VA here just to remind me there's no extrema there. That's a vertical asymptote. That's a scary point. And then pick a point here. Let's pick, let's say, 2. If I plug in 2 here, this is still negative in front. If I put a 2 in here, that's going to be 4 minus 1 is still 3. Squared is positive. I see a negative divided by a positive that remains negative. So what have we discovered? We've discovered that this function is first decreasing down to this vertical asymptote. Then it's decreasing down to this vertical asymptote. And then decreasing down to this vertical asymptote. It's always decreasing. It's never increasing. So this is a function that's just always going downhill. Not looking good. OK, so that's the increasing, decreasing issues. Now we want to take a look at the curvature issues. All right, well, let's see if we can make some progress in this problem. I'm going to need to take the derivative of the derivative. Let me slide this information off here to this side. Let me remind you that the derivative that we found is equal to minus x squared plus 1 divided by x squared minus 1 all squared. And now if we take the derivative of this, the second derivative, again, I have to use the quotient rule. So it's the bottom times the derivative of the top, which is negative 2x minus the top. And so what's the top? Well, the top is just a negative. So that makes this a positive, x squared plus 1 times the derivative of the bottom. Now, that's going to require me to do a little bit of a chain rule here. So the chain rule is going to look like what? Well, the chain rule is going to be blop squared. So 2 blop to the first power, peel that away, times the derivative of that, which is 2x, all divided by the bottom squared. So x squared minus 1 all to the fourth power. That looks pretty, pretty horrific, but let's simplify that and see if we can make any progress here. In fact, you'll notice something. There's an x squared minus 1 right here, and there's an x squared minus 1 right here. I can actually factor those out. So I can factor out one of these x squared minus 1s with this x squared minus 1. Also notice that I can factor out this 2x with that 2x. So I can do an awful lot of factoring. 